Hey guys, welcome back to the Homestead Adventure. In today's episode, we will be discussing a little bit about which seeds like to be started indoors and which seeds like to be directly planted in the ground outside. So the first thing we're going to discuss is plants that don't like to be transplanted. So things like peas and beans and other vining vegetables most of those aren't going to like to be transplanted. Those ones are going to be started right in the ground outside. Now there are some differences. So peas are a cold weather crop. So you're gonna be planting those really early spring and they're going to like the colder temperatures. Beans like bush beans and pole beans on the other hand, most of those are going to be warm weather crops so those are going to go directly in the ground after your soil temperatures have warmed up to at least 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're not going to be starting any of your green beans, peas, sugar snap peas, um, pinto beans, black beans. None of those are going to be started indoors because they just don't like their root systems to be tampered with and you're gonna have a much better crop if you are just going to plant them right in the ground. So other things that don't like to be transplanted are any of your root vegetables. So you're not going to start any of your carrots, beets, turnips, and um, things like that, those aren't going to be started indoors because since they are a root vegetable, the root is what matters on those. And if you're going to start things like your carrots or your radishes indoors, and then you try to transplant them outside, and you're disturbing those tiny little roots, then you're going to have really wonky shaped uh, vegetables. So I've seen people try to start radishes indoors and that's when like radishes are a vegetable that is really really early they only have like a 20 to 30 day much uh, days to maturity so there really is no point of starting in them indoors anyway because you're going to harvest those really really quick and if you're trying to start them indoors and then you transplant them, they're just gonna get long and uh, kind of like stringy and they're not gonna form a good bulb that you want on radishes. So any of your root vegetables, do not start those indoors. Um, I see a lot of people trying to plant carrots indoors, start those indoors. Even though carrots take a longer time to grow outside, if you do try to start them indoors and you transplant them, you're gonna get small and wonky carrots. They're not going to be big, straight, long carrots because they just don't like to be disturbed once they're planted. And I know carrots can take a lot of patience and kind of a lot of work when you're thinning them out. But if you do it correctly, I promise you, you will be rewarded. And I will have actually an episode on how to grow your carrots because I know a lot of people have issues with growing carrots and that's actually one of my most productive and successful crops every year. So I am going to show you exactly how to plant those, how to thin them out and how to take care of those as well. So things like potatoes and um, things that you're going to start not as seeds but as, um, as like a root, those are going to be uh, planted outside as well. So those you don't need to start indoors. So any of your root vegetables, anything that grows below the ground, don't plant those, in, don't start those seeds inside. Things like onions, however, onions have a long growing season and a lot of people will start them at starts or uh, plant the little bulbs. But for me, the best way that I've been able to grow onions is actually from seed. And I do start those indoors very, very early because if you're starting onions from seeds, it can take quite some time. So that's something that actually forms like a bulb that you will want to start indoors if you're starting from seed. 
especially if you have a short growing season like I do here in zone five. So I start like all my onion seeds in like a big tray all together and just have them like really close to each other until they're ready to put outside when the soil temperatures have warmed up. If you are planting corn, corn is another one that does not like to be transplanted, corn and popcorn, any variety of corn, you're gonna start those right outside. Those are also a warm weather crop, so you're going to plant those when your soil temperature has reached 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So don't be starting your corn seeds indoors. One good thing about directly planting your seeds outside instead of indoors is it actually gives you a lot more space for those seeds that do need to be started early and started indoors. So I actually like when I have a lot of stuff that I have to direct seed and that just saves a lot more room for the indoor starts. So let's talk about some plants that take a long time to get started. That will be your tomatoes, your peppers, and most of your herbs. So those ones you're going to start very early inside, especially if you have a short growing season like I do. So I'm not actually sure about this if you live like in the south or somewhere really hot. Um, I know some places have a lot longer growing season and you might be able to start them outside, but here I start them very, very early. Uh, like I said, I, I live in Wisconsin, so I only have a couple of months until I have to harvest. My winters have been later, like they've been coming later and later, so I've been planting later. And usually I'm not going to put my transplants out that early, but I will start some of my seeds pretty early outside. So last year when I started my broccoli indoors and I wanted a spring crop, I did plant those a little too early outside and they died because it was too cold. So some things, they just have to be timed right. And remember when you're planting, you're going to divide your crops into cool weather and warm weather crops and that will, that'll tell you when you need to plant them. So cool weather crops, you can actually get two separate harvests. You can do a spring harvest and a fall harvest. So if you're planting a spring harvest, most of your brassicas, which are anything in the cabbage family, that will be cabbage, kale, kohlrabi, broccoli, cauliflower, and there's a couple other ones, but um, those all I'm going to start indoors a little bit early so that I can get some starts going because if I plant those directly in the ground in the spring, then they're not going to be ready to harvest until summer. And that's when my cold weather crops do not like to be harvested. They don't like to be harvested in the hot weather because that's when they start bolting. So bolting is when your, your vegetables will stop producing an actual vegetable and they'll start sending out flowers and seeds. So that's why I start my spring crops, my cool weather spring crops indoors um, because most of them are gonna have a little bit longer growing season and they don't like to be in the hot weather. So there are some cold weather crops that are gonna go straight in the ground, but most of my brassicas I am going to start indoors because they do just take a little bit longer. Things like celery. Celery is pretty hard to start as seeds, so I have tried that in the past and I'm gonna try again this year to start them indoors and I will transplant those later. Celery is another cool weather crop. Things like kale, spinach, and other leafy greens, those I will usually plant directly outside. They have just a little, a little bit shorter growing season. And so just be looking at your seed packet, see how many days to harvest, and if it's going to be cool enough to harvest by that time, or if it's gonna get too hot. So that's kind of your rule of thumb with your cool weather vegetables. So if you're planting in the spring, you're gonna start them indoors a little bit early 
if they have a longer growing period and you're not going to start any of your root vegetables indoors. So even though carrots and beets and things like that are cold weather crops, you are going to directly seed those outside. Um, usually here in Wisconsin, we don't plant our warm weather crops until Memorial Day weekend. So we plant like very end of May, beginning of June. But some of my cool weather crops can go in a little bit earlier. So probably two to four weeks earlier than my warm weather crops. That's when I'm going to put my cold weather crops in. But you really need to learn when your last frost date is and that's when you are going to be looking at your seed packet if it's something like it says that it's 55 to 60 days to harvest so you're going to be looking at your last frost date and that's when you're going to be planting and then you're going to think okay when do i need to harvest this so if it's broccoli and you need to harvest before it gets too hot and for me that's like middle end of june and I will count back from that, the 55, 60 days, whatever it is, and that's when I'm going to start my seeds indoors is 55 days before I want to get it harvested. So let's say I planted my broccoli indoors three weeks before I transplant outside. So I take my little seed start, I plant it outside after hardening it off and it'll be growing in that cool weather and then it will be ready to harvest before it gets too hot. So that is why we start our cool weather crops indoors for the spring. For fall harvest, if you want to do a second fall harvest for your cold weather crops, you can plant most of them outside in midsummer. But if your summer is very, very hot and you don't want to be starting those seeds yet because it's too hot, you can start your seeds indoors for a fall crop as well and transplant them when it starts getting a little cooler. Otherwise, just throw those right in the ground and you will be able to harvest in the fall. Normally, a lot of your cold weather crops are going to do better in the spring, but there are some that prefer a fall harvest like Brussels sprouts. They are better harvested in the fall. Uh, things like carrots, uh, lettuce, spinach, most of your cold weather crops, they're going to tolerate a light frost and they're going to actually taste sweeter and better after a light frost. You don't want a hard frost, just a very light frost and that'll actually make them taste sweeter. So things like carrots I have harvested in the summer. They can be harvested in the summer, but they tend to be a little more bitter in the summer. So if you can time it out right, you can harvest your carrots in the fall after a light frost and they will taste a lot sweeter. And remember things like your peas that you're going to plant right in the ground. You can plant those a little early and they'll tolerate a light frost in the spring when they're growing or even in the fall they'll actually taste better after a light frost. So, so it's really just timing it right, getting to know your first and last frost date, however long each plant takes to harvest, and, and you're gonna time each individual plant. So a lot of people ask, when do I start my seeds indoors? And that's such a broad question because you really need to know each individual plant's needs. Is it cool weather? Is it warm weather? Is it a root vegetable? Does it not like to be transplanted even though it's not a root vegetable like your peas and beans? And how many days does it take to harvest? What is your growing zone and your first and last frost date? So, so it's just timing each of those individually. So let's talk a little bit about warm weather crops. So things like tomatoes and peppers, those are going to be started indoors very, very early for me here in zone five because it's going to take them a long time to start growing and I have such a short season. So if you're going to like your nursery and you're buying starts, it can get really expensive if you're buying your starts every year. So if you want to plant like 10 tomato plants and you buy 10 starts at like 10 bucks a piece, you know, that gets really expensive. Also, if you're 
you know when you go to your garden center and you're picking out tomato and pepper plants you're getting large plants you're not going to be buying them like this big because it's just not going to have enough time before harvest and you want to start harvesting midsummer anyway and you want to be able to keep picking those because things like peppers the more you pick them the more it produces same thing with cucumbers um, cucumbers are something that can either be started indoors or planted outdoors you just don't want to start them too soon indoors so that you get a long growing vine before you plant it outside it just helps to start them maybe like two weeks before transplanting them if you just want a longer time to be able to pick those if you want a longer growing season things like cucumbers the more you pick the more it produces so it actually does help in my climate to start it just a little bit early indoors so that i have a longer time to harvest and which means more cucumbers things like eggplant and okra they need really hot weather and they will take a little bit longer to be ready to harvest so you're going to start those indoors as well um, like I said, I don't know about the southern states or really warm areas if you need to start those indoors or not, but for colder climates, make sure that you're starting your warm weather crops indoors if needed. So the reason for starting them indoors, if it takes like 120 days for your plant to be ready to harvest, I don't have that much time. I don't have that long of growing season so if it gets too cold before i can harvest my crop then i pretty much just lost that crop warm weather crops will not tolerate any frost or weather below 50 degrees fahrenheit so so it's the same thing as with your cold weather crops you're going to be looking at how long does this take to harvest it'll say right on your seed packet how many days to harvest and count back from your first frost date so you're gonna want to be harvesting before it gets too cold and like i said things with tomatoes and peppers you actually want to be starting to harvest those like midsummer, so that you keep getting more throughout the summer instead of trying to harvest all right at the end of the season and you're just not gonna get as much as you would if you started them earlier. Things like melons, I have started those indoors as well, but again, they're a vining vegetable, uh, vining fruit, so you don't wanna start them too early and then they're just gonna start, you know, shooting out vines everywhere. Um, just a couple weeks early just to help get that started and you can also start them in the ground. I've done both, uh, but I feel like when I do melons, just a couple weeks early really helps those. So there aren't a lot of root vegetables that you plant in the summer, um, at least not here in Wisconsin, so you don't really have to worry about those um, for your warm weather crops, other than you know your potatoes, if you wanna do sweet potatoes, stuff like that but just a good rule of thumb all root vegetables are directly planted outdoors tomatoes peppers eggplant stuff like that you're going to want to start those indoors because they have a longer growing period and most of your herbs are warm weather crops and most of them take a long time if you are starting from seed and that's actually why they sell so many herbs at the garden centers because they do take a long time so most people aren't just going to throw their herb seeds outside you're going to want to start those indoors so things like your basil oregano thyme mint stevia all those get started indoors and i start mine very early so that they are actually going to start to be ready to harvest when i plant them so that way i can harvest throughout the summer because most herbs you know you can just cut off a piece and it'll grow right back so that way I have all summer to have fresh herbs I love going out to the garden and picking some fresh basil and making some margarita pizza it's so good 
most of your herbs you're gonna start indoors there are some exceptions so borage is one of those that does not like to be transplanted so get to know your herbs get to know which ones don't like to be transplanted and get to know how long it's going to take to harvest and you don't want to wait until fall to harvest your herbs you really want to be able to pick them throughout the summer and then in the fall i do just cut down the whole plant and i dry whatever's left so that's basically what you need to know about starting your seeds indoors versus starting them outdoors and if you don't know how to start your seeds indoors i do have another episode on how to start those seeds so go ahead and check that out and I will have some other videos on companion planting, crop rotation, and actually starting your garden as well. Um, it is important to know which kind of vegetables like to be grown together and which ones don't. So there's things like fennel does not have any friends. You don't want to plant fennel next to anything. Um, things like tomatoes and basil go together hand in hand they love each other they actually make each other taste better and you really you kind of want to put your herbs in with your vegetables i have started like a separate herb garden and then i realized that you know what you probably should put your herbs in with your vegetables because a lot of those strong smelling herbs like rosemary basil chives those are gonna deter some of your harmful insects. So, so companion planting is a really good way to ensure that you're gonna have good crops. So I will have an episode on that, stay tuned. And I'm really excited to share that as well. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope to see you on the next adventure. Bye guys.